Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Grant Shia. I study a Bachelor of Spain degree, and my summer internship program was geolocating historical panoramas. Um, and I've been supervised by David Belton and Petra Helmholtz from the Department of Spatial Science, and Joshua Olick and Andrew Woods from the Curtin Heart. So this project is a collaboration between the Curtin University and the State Library of Western Australia, so I would like to acknowledge them for all their support. Uh, a brief background on this project. So, uh, geolocation is defined as the process of identifying the physical location or position on Earth of a user's device, such as a mobile phone or a navigation device. Uh, so, panoramas are so provided for this project with a subset of 100 panoramas which were obtained from the South State Library of Western Australia with many more still available. So panoramas are very useful for showing how Earth has changed over the years when compared to modern day reshoots of the images of the land and seascapes. However, there is no precise location, location data for the historical So the main objectives for the 10 week project consisted of developing a method to calculate the position of the historical images, establishing a process to, to evaluate the accuracy of the determined position, and then implement these methods on a series of historical images, and finally verification using a modern day recapture. The first stage of the project was to examine the images for suitable, to examine the subset of images for suitable panoramas. In order to assess whether the, image, whether the image was suitable to incorporate into this project, a selective criterion was defined. This consisted ideally of high resolution panoramas with a cylindrical projection containing a wide field of view with key landmarks that is still existing in the image and located around the Earth CBD area. Here is a sample of some, of some of the panoramas chosen for geolocation. The first image is of Earth CBD as viewed from South Earth foreshore, captured in 1868 by Alfred Stone. The second image is of Earth, is also of Earth, taken from behind the pension barracks at Harlem House in 1913 by A.G. Sands. The third image is also Earth CV, viewed from the Swan River foreshore in 1965, a few years after the construction of the Narrows Bridge on Mitchell Freeway, captured by Reginald Lambert. So the next step of the process was identification of key landmarks within the image. The criteria for this was that such landmarks had to be visible in the images, and the locations of those landmarks could be extracted. This consisted of observing pixel coordinates in the image and geographical coordinates, latitude and longitude of those landmarks. This was usually done using Google Earth or the Landgate Historical Aerial Image Archives. And uh, common features often included the pension of barracks, Bishop's Palace, Government House, Royal Birth Hospital, and St. Mary's Cathedral. And it was important to transform these coordinates into a common coordinate system, um, such as the Earth Coastal Grid, as this helps to reduce some of the problems that may be encountered. And the idea behind the, the reception algorithm was that the pixel and geographic coordinates of these key landmarks were, input, were the input values. These pixel coordinates would then be converted to angles um, between the landmarks, kind of like and then between each of those lines there. As the image displays on the right, there are lines running to each of the features which relate to some angle and then they intersect at a particular location in space. The location was then found by minimizing the square sum of the angle residuals by applying a combined unified least squares model. A unified model was applied as it considers the standard deviations of the observations and also the location of data contained from who were in the data. 
So the first image represents the results of the algorithm finding the point, the images with the point IDs. Cheers. <laughs> Yes, so um, the pixel coordinates um, are displayed with a blue circle. Um, yes, and then the residuals are the red dots and they are connected by a yellow line. However, it's pretty hard to see as the residuals were in the size of pixel coordinates, pixel values. The algorithm then also output this data to Google Earth as a KML file which included the points used, connecting lines to these points and air ellipses. For the purpose of the visual rep representation, the air ellipses have been set, scaled to three times, three times the scale, yeah. So the location of this image appears to be in the middle of one of the lakes near Mitchell Freeway. But upon input into Lang the Langate historical aerial image, it's from March 1965, the same year that this historical image was captured, it appears that the location is potentially correct. In terms of evaluating the accuracy of the algorithm, independent tests were performed using three different geolocation techniques. Locations were recorded through conducting a real-time kinematic survey using global navigational satellite systems with a single base station to achieve an accuracy of at least five centimetres. Secondly, horizontal angles were observed between several landmarks using a Leica TS-15 total station, which carried an angular precision of less than 10 seconds of arc. Finally, the resection algorithm was we developed was used that applies a least squared adjustment to the input parameters to determine the image position and then finally a modern day panorama was also captured. So the test site consisted of five stations defined along the South Perth foreshore at the, at the location of a geolocated historical panorama. This test, was, this test site was chosen as it was easily accessible and allowed the capturing of a modern day panorama. All five of the stations established were occupied in the RTK survey and had new images captured, whereas only two stations, D and E, were occupied by a total station. Well, it's not very good. <laughs> the modern day panorama was captured using the Nodal Ninja camera mount, as this was easily attached to a tripod and leveled over each station, allowing the position of the camera to be adjusted exactly over the rotational axis. This helps to eliminate parallax errors when capturing mul multiple images to create a seamlessly stitched continuous image. Approximately seven to eight images were captured at each station covering about 15 degrees each. So the new panoramas were then fed into the resection algorithm and the same process is, was followed as previously. Coordinates are input with respect to pixel values and also the geographic location. The program is then run, the adjustment is performed, and the position of the camera is determined. These results were also output as KML files to Google Earth and dis to display the key points used, as well as the lines to the features and the air ellipses. Oops. So the accuracy of our developed algorithm could then be assessed through the comparison of the coordinates obtained, obtained for each of the geolocation methods. So table one represents the positional error of each of the established stations based on our method. The air ellipses are displayed in terms of magnitude and orientation from the west or the x-axis. The values are relatively high but consistent throughout which is mainly attributed to the input geographical coordinates having an accuracy of only 5 to 10 metres. And considering that the same points were used for each image, with similar geometries as well. So table two compares the coordinates obtained from the results in the resection algorithm with the RTK solution. The average difference, the difference in coordinates obtained from the results was about 9.7 centimetres in the east direction, 8.3 centimetres in the northern direction, with a max value of 33 centimetres calculated in the eastern coordinate 
this is at station D. These differences were then confirmed in the comparison shown in table three using the total station observations with averages in easting and northing of less than half a metre. Overall, the evaluation shows that our method is achieving comparable results and the differences are insignificant for the purposes of this project. Once the images were captured of the modern day scene, it could then be overlaid with the historical image. And upon a closer inspection of the overlaid images, it is evident that some features align fairly accurately. Ooh, doesn't look very good, but... So here is another example of an image that was also geolocated. This image is of the Perth skyline as captured from the National Trust Building lookout in 1920. It is fairly evident that the location of this image is accurate as it was taken from the lookout, so the algorithm has done a fairly decent job. The Landgate historical image on the right demonstrates that the National Trust Building also hasn't changed much over the years. However, most of the other images that were geolocated aren't as easy to tell if they're correct, like this one was. So in conclusion, a method for geolocating historical panoramas was introduced and a total of six historical images were geolocated. However, only one modern day image was recaptured. The method was evaluated to have an accuracy of at least half a metre and often better in some cases. The positional accuracy can be further improved by including data snooping techniques for the automatic detection of outliers <coughs> in the adjustment process. Future workings on this project could, in could include this as well as incorporating height observations into the solution in order to determine a three-dimensional position. Uh, yeah, so yeah, thanks for listening to my presentation and please visit the website at historicalpanoramas.com.au. Uh, is there any questions for anyone? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> cool. All right, thank you very much, Brent. No worries.